Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm very, very delighted to be part of this uh, wonderful event, Midas, and thank you, Al and um, Brian, for making me part of this uh, event. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, what exciting things have been happening in the Midas, and also I've mingled with uh, various participants and made new friends, and then I look forward to future collaborations uh, with uh, uh, many of you guys. Uh, it's truly exciting to be doing data science in this day and age. Uh, so, as Al said, uh, I actually, uh, I'm coming from China. My name's Tom Luo. Uh, I currently direct the Shenzhen Research Institute of Big Data. It's a very young institute, only six months old. So compared to Allen Institute, <laughs> compared to Midas, we're the little younger brother, okay, <laughs> from China. Uh, but we're very, uh, growing very fast, as I'll show you. Uh, I'm also wearing another hat, so I'm also affiliated with the, the Chinese University of Hong Kong campus, uh, uh, Shenzhen campus. I'm currently the uh, VP academic there. So I'll talk a little bit about the university as well as the research institute, and I'll introduce you uh, to the research institute about, and also its R&D. So we don't just do research. This is a little bit different from maybe the other two centers. Uh, we do, whoops, it goes by itself. We also do development, so that's, uh, uh, that's another thing we're uh, doing. So I'll tell you a little bit, uh, what we, uh, where are we, okay? Where are we located, and who are we? And also the connection with the university, so CHK Shenzhen, and uh, what do we do, and the R&D, and I'll particularly talk about international collaboration opportunities. Uh, so we are actually located in the city of Shenzhen. If you haven't been to China, haven't heard about this uh, city, uh, this is time, okay? This is because it's a really, uh, a modern, new, dynamic city. 35 years ago, it was merely a small fishing village. Right now, it's a major cosmopolitan city uh, in China and in the world. It's uh, very young, average citizen's age. It's less than 30, 28, I, I believe. And it's fast growing. Compared to many other major cities in China, this city has very little pollution. It's a coastal city right next to Hong Kong. It's the fourth largest city in terms of GDP in China. Per capita GDP is the highest in China. It's projected to surpass Hong Kong in terms of GDP this year. And uh, uh, that's the picture. Uh, you, as you can see, it's no longer a small fishing village anymore, okay? Uh, Shenzhen is really, in terms of high tech, is really becoming the innovation capital of China with hundreds of thousands of small companies, dynamic companies, people, young people flocking to the city to make their dreams, basically pursue their uh, entrepreneurial uh, dream. And uh, it's headquartered to many of the country's leading high-tech companies, including, for example, Huawei, Tencent. These are big, sort of huge international companies. Uh, BYD, it's a... Uh, uh, and the Mindray and BGI, bioinformatics, uh, and the DJI, that's uh, drone companies, controls, it's, I think it's 70% of the world market, the drones that it sells to the world market. These are all young companies, like 10 years, I mean, maybe a few years, and, and then they are run by many young people there. It's, that's the feature. When I walk into the subway station, the subway train, I'm easily the oldest guy in the train, <laughs> on the train. So, and the government currently is financially very, very strong. Its revenue, government income annually is growing like 40% in a year, and they invest 4% of the GPT in science and technology. Uh, so, now, so it's situated in Shenzhen, but uh, to, to introduce the research institute, I wouldn't be able to do that without mentioning the connection with the Chinese University of Hong Kong Shenzhen campus, because the founding members, myself included, are all from this, uh, this university. Uh, so in, uh, in short, this new university, CHK Shenzhen, is a new research university founded, again, not long ago. Uh, it's only uh, uh, two or three years old, like uh, two, 2014, actually. Uh, that's the time when I was uh, uh, recruited uh, to serve as the VP academic for this new campus. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a fast-growing university, so it's a truly international university. So the faculty members are globally recruited, okay? 
And then we offer internationally competitive salary, namely U.S. salaries we, we, offer, we offer. And then we also have, I help them in, uh, uh, implement this uh, nine months plus three months salary structure, this uh, policy. So uh, that's already in place. A 10-year system is also in place, put in, has been put in place. Uh, the students are also globally recruited. The students receive CUHK degree. It's an international degree. Uh, university degree, and the medium of instruction is in English. And the, all the ca academic calendars are synchronized with the international universities. Namely, there's a Christmas holiday, the semester starts right after the ne uh, January 1st, and so on. And then semester ends in May, and then there's a summer. So it's easy for faculty exchange, student exchange. All the textbooks that we use is the same as those everybody else is using. So the, that's the same uh, system. Currently we have already, even though we only are two and, three, two and a half years in operation, we already have about 2,000 students uh, on campus. This includes undergraduate, master's degree, and PhD degree students uh, on campus. Eventually we re uh, will reach uh, uh, 11,000 uh, in about eight years' time. That's the projected growth, okay? Uh, so now, the, what about uh, this, uh, this institute? So how, how is this institute, uh, Big Data Research Institute, come about? It's uh, actually a group of us from the university apply for a grant through the city, and the city thought, oh, this is a great area, great good for people. We actually had people from overseas to join our team, actually. Uh, some of you may know oh, Stephen Boy was uh, from Stanford. It's part of our team. Uh, and we applied for grants, and then the city actually thought this is a great area, great team. They gave us not only the money, but also gave us a, in, a new entity. They set up this research institute, which is actually separate from the university. So we are legally registered as an independent organization, non-profit organization, and the city charges, charged us with sort of a responsibilities to lead and coordinate the overall effort of big data related research in the city of Shenzhen. So that's the overall mission. And then also we are in charge not only doing research, but also doing technology transfer, commercialization, and the development of technologies. Okay, so that's basically uh, what's going on. Uh, so it was founded in March this year, so uh, I had, we had the pleasure of El Hero participating in our inauguration ceremony in March. Uh, uh, we attracted many top-level government officials and the leading companies like Huawei and then China Mobile. All these uh, companies participated uh, in our uh, inauguration ceremony. Uh, so that's me uh, talking to media. So I attracted other media uh, uh, to, to cover. So that's me. So myself, I grew up in China, and then uh, I received my PhD from, uh, from MIT, and then spent like uh, almost 30 years of my time uh, overseas uh, in, in Canada and the US. Uh, now I'm back uh, full time uh, in Shenzhen leading this effort. Uh, we have two vice directors for this institute. Uh, Professor Tsai also uh, has extensive overseas uh, experience. And then uh, uh, Professor Tsui also uh, the same. Uh, so, uh, and then our team is actually quite international. And then this is just some of the names. Uh, uh, th this is growing, like uh, we have 30 plus people already. Uh, the, uh, many of these uh, uh, people have uh, national uh, 1,000 talent uh, titles. And then there, uh, uh, so actually we have Nobel laureate uh, on our board as well. Uh, so basically, we are doing various things. We have visiting uh, scholars and so on. Uh, we also partner uh, very closely uh, with the Supercomputing Center uh, in Shenzhen. That's a national center. Uh, uh, you see these big buildings uh, here, and then these um, many, many racks of uh, CPUs. And then their utility bills is, uh, is a huge one. I, I, don't, I don't remember, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it run, runs in, in millions basically, uh, this is uh, their, uh, every, every year's utility bill. So the, uh, they, they have the CPU high-performance uh, cloud computing storage and the high uh, HPC, all these facilities there directly available to us, as well as the government data's data. They actually store government, many data, it's, uh, much of the data is uh, stored there. So we, uh, we are asked to work with the 
this uh, center to analyze data, to make sense of the data, and help the government to do so-called evidence-based policy uh, uh, research. Uh, so the major activities in this new uh, SRIBD the, uh, Research Institute uh, are in the five, five uh, broad categories. Uh, this includes fundamental research, methodology, methodology uh, this uh, data science, and that's what we do. And also we develop innovative technology in key application areas. This may be a little bit different from Midas and then, uh, and then Allen uh, uh, Turing uh, Institute. Uh, basically, we, uh, we also do uh, technology uh, development, uh, technology transfer commercialization, uh, because we are not a sort of a, just an academic unit. We are actually a nonprofit uh, research institute uh, established by the city government. And we are also partnering with the, uh, we also have an educational aspect. Uh, that is to collaborate with the Chinese University of Hong Kong Shenzhen campus. We are starting a Masters of Data Science program next year. So the proposal has been submitted. It's been in the process of getting approved. So next year we expect to have uh, 60 or 80 uh, master's students uh, uh, to, to, to enroll in this program. And then also finally, the city wants us to promote Shenzhen as a big data R&D uh, center in the international, on the international stage. So that's part of this uh, uh, overall mission that we are trying to accomplish. So in terms of the actual research directions we are pursuing, uh, there are, uh, these are some of the current uh, research directions. Uh, so we are looking at the distributed and parallel large scale optimization okay, uh, to analyze data. And we're also looking at the, uh, um, because we are based in China, we are actually very interested using big data uh, approach to do artificial intelligence, in particular, Chinese language understanding. That's a very key uh, aspect. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit more uh, about this because uh, uh, we have a project with the hospital. We want to sort of uh, doing, using AI Chinese language understanding to, to do the patient uh, and doctor dialogue, the human machine. Uh, interaction uh, using artificial intelligence. And then video uh, image understanding and the integration and fusion of homogeneous data sets. So when I talk about these research areas, we are, uh, we are not only doing actual academic research, but we are developing tools, the actual prototyping of the tools to do this data uh, acquisition, data integration, and also the AI system. We also have a prototyping, a little prototyping system already in place even though we're only six months in the operation. So it's very high, sort of a fast-paced uh, work uh, uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in, in Shenzhen. Uh, they were talking about China's speed. Shenzhen's speed is a different level. So that's, that's, that's basically what, what's happening. So bioinformatics is another area we are uh, working, yeah, so <laughs> that gets Brian excited. So we are working with the hospital, we get a lot of genomic data, and then uh, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more. Uh, social communication networks, we're partnering with Huawei uh, on various uh, projects there. Financial data analytics, many financial companies actually approach us, wanted to partner with us to, to, work, uh, to look at their data sets and so on. So, the actual research uh, projects we have uh, actually running right now is data-driven science and technology project recommendation system. So we're looking at the various projects that have been uh, awarded in the past and to be awarded. So we look at the various aspects of this proposal. Do we, you know China, a big thing is anti-corruption. So this sort of system helps makes the officials like there is safe. They can use this sort of system to pre-screen these proposals, because there are a lot of phony sort of uh, proposals that uh, these people make up their records. So we're using the data sets to analyze the pre-screen. Oh, this is more likely to be a phony one, or this is more a credible one. So this actually uh, gives uh, uh, the government, uh, so they are actually very keen for us to develop such a recommendation system or screening system. And also same about the uh, public health monitor and prevention system, we're developing apps for the hospital uh, uh, software deployment de uh, for these patients to use on their cell phones to report back their current health condition to the uh, hospital service. So all of this data is being collected as we speak, okay? So we're developing all these 
software rolling out these things uh, right now. So uh, natural language processing, um, uh, a semantic understanding, deep learning based on Chinese, based on Chinese language processing and dialogue system. We already have a prototyping system uh, in work in place. And then we're also looking at the uh, efficient algorithms for integrative analysis of multi omics uh, omni, uh, multi -omics, uh, biological data. This is partnering with the hospital. And the learning analytics, so uh, that's why I'm very interested in Stephanie's uh, project. So we are looking at CUHK Shenzhen's data sets. We have full direct access to these data sets. Uh, data sets, and uh, we are trying to make sense of this and trying to basically designing uh, ways to predict students' behavior, problems before they actually happen, and the designing intervening uh, 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 actions to, to try to prevent things from going uh, from sort of uh, maybe uh, ominous to bad to worse. So we want to sort of intervene for, uh, in this process. So the university is very keen on this. So I want to present this idea from, on behalf of the research institute to the university. They're all sort of excited. Immediately, we have the full access to all the data. But we are actually very careful with the privacy issues. I, I can talk about this uh, uh, later on. So this is actually the data acquisition. We have, as I said, we also are developing technologies. We're developing technologies part of, for, for example, data acquisition tools. If you want to do big data, Data is the, is the king. So really, you have to have the big data. So how do we get access to, to, to get the data? We develop the tools to acquire the data. So for example, uh, we have the tools. We, are de we have deployed, in this, in, this is in the hospital, recording the conversations between a doctor, a physician, and, then, and, then, and the patient. But this is with their full consent. They know what, what's, this is a research purpose, and this is the data is, uh, is protected. Uh, 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 securely and so on. So we are recording this and then as we speak, we are getting data constantly streaming back to our servers. So that's what, uh, so we would like to use this to do the AI system. So the Chinese language understanding is based on, we have the data, how actual Chinese doctor interacts with the Chinese patient. We use this data to actually build a system uh, uh, AI system to do that. And also we do the apps and uh, we also have processing tools to extract uh, uh, text features from PDF files, uh, medical records, and so on. So these are, are being developed uh, as we speak, or uh, actually already in place. Uh, so we also, the city wants us to develop uh, technologies and then actively pressing us to commercialize this. And we are a bunch of academics. Okay, we were very slow in terms of commercializing. What commercializing? What, what value does this have? Well, this all, I mean, they, keeps, they keep coming. So they want us to commercialize. And we are sort of a little slow on this. We, I mean, me in particular, I'm very careful about this. Uh, whenever you go into business world, it's a different thing. And then we, we are more comfortable in the academic domain. Uh, so, but we are actually, exploring the legal business world and then try to set up uh, another maybe a, a we, we don't want this institute to do business directly. So we want to set up another sort of commercial company spin off from the institute. That's the way we're uh, trying to do. Okay. Uh, and we are partnering with the, with the, with the uh, various industry partners. We actually do contract, contract research with these people, uh, with the Huawei, for example, with Lohu Hospital, China Mobile, and then uh, and the Supercomputing Center, we have various uh, specific, well-defined projects. They give us data, and then we analyze things for them, developing softwares for, uh, software and the system for them. So that's uh, what we do. Uh, so these are some of the pictures. We visit the hospital. We spend a lot of time talking to uh, the people in hospital and talking to people in the uh, supercomputing uh, center. Last but not least, uh, let me talk about international collaboration because this is probably the most pertinent to this group of uh, audience. So at the institute, and because I'm wearing two hats, remember, so I work in the university as a VP academic, so I develop policies. We, we hire people. I hire a lot of people. So deans, full professors, system professors, you name it. Okay, We hire a lot of people. And then uh, I also work for the Research Institute where we also hire people. 
a lot of researchers and so on. So we hold joint conferences and workshops every year. Uh, next, next month, actually, we are having a big uh, workshop on data science. Uh, so Al will be our guest uh, uh, VIP sp uh, keynote speaker there also. Uh, uh, joint research proposals. We actually we welcome international participants to work with us to write proposals to the city, to the government, and work with the industry and partner with the industry. Industry, they knock on my door. They, one at one time, one day, there's one company coming to my office, putting four contracts on my table. They say, you have to sign this. We we're not go going away without this. <laughs> We want to spend the money. So I say, no, 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 I can only work on one of these. I, I, I don't have much time to work on. So this is how eager the industry in China, high-tech industry, wants to collaborate with academic world uh, at the international level. They, they, they demand standard. They demand excellence. But if you, ha you can deliver, they, the demand is huge. Okay? Uh, so the visitors program, we have people, I mean, if people are interested in sabbatical leaves, uh, or fractional appointment. I mean, for example, Stephen Boy from Stanford is a, a new year. All these people, leading people, uh, they all work uh, uh, in this university and the institute as, uh, spend a fraction of their time uh, in China. And they get the fractional appointments or, or visiting appointments and then uh, summer appointments and so on, for example. And most interestingly, recently I got a pool of money uh, from the university. We established this so something called presidential postdoctoral fellowship. I really would like to uh, uh, alert to you to this opportunity because I think it's truly exciting. It's a two or three year appointment uh, term, appointment with an annual funding of 50 or 60,000 uh, US dollars. And this, the fully funded from Shenzhen, from, from this no, there's no need for funding from outside. It's fully funded from Shenzhen. And then two supervisors though, so one from Shenzhen, one from overseas. For example, uh, from minus from U of, uh, University of Michigan. Uh, you, you only, so the PDF candidate can be anybody from the world. Doesn't have to be, Chinese, uh, doesn't have to be Chinese, uh, anybody. Because it's, uh, the working language in the university and the institute, institute, it's in English. So you need to identify a candidate, a supervisor in Shenzhen, and then you yourself can supervise uh, this person and then uh, can, must spend, another catch is, uh, must spend half time in Shenzhen. Otherwise, it's all open. So there's a great opportunity to build bridges, to link so uh, the, the researchers through the postdoctoral fellowship. That's an easy way to start collaboration. And then we can also write uh, propo joint proposals uh, with these postdocs and so on. And the Shenzhen and central government have very attractive talent attraction like a programs. They give you cash awards for such as coming on board. Uh, for example, St Stephen Boy was got one of these short-term visiting uh, thing from the central government. I mean, it's a uh, very handsome uh, uh, rewards. So anything is possible there. So budget of the city, of the government in terms of investment in science and technology, in terms of uh, attracting talented people from around the world, it's, uh, According to Stephen Boyd, <laughs> my good friend, he's always say, you guys have infinite budget. In some sense, that's true. So we are not, we are unconstrained in terms of resource at the moment. Okay, when we grow, maybe this will hit, hit us, but at the moment, we are not but, uh, constrained by the resource. Uh, academic activities, we have organized many uh, workshops and so on. Uh, so this is my friend uh, giving so you see, you attract big audience, and you, people, you have people standing, sort of sitting on the floor, really just uh, uh, because the, the, uh, the, the draw is huge uh, in China in this area. Uh, this is a workshop we held uh, uh, in, the, in March. And then this is uh, the machine learning summer school we organized uh, during the summer uh, from uh, attracting many people. And then this is the next month. Uh, these are actually real photos, okay, not sort of a... Uh, beautified thing. Uh, this is a coastal city, and then this is a city, and this is one of the uh, center in the city. And then this is the, f uh, the focus of the next month's data science uh, workshop. Uh, uh, it's going to be in bioinformatics, uh, 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 image understanding, Chinese language understanding, network monitoring, and so on. Okay, so I'll stop here. I know uh, we are short of time. 
If you want to, if you're interested in any of these opportunities, you know how to reach me. Okay, thank you very much. That's what I will talk about today. It's called the Big Data to Knowledge Initiative, BD2K. Um, so BD2K is unusual in that it's trans-NIH. So usually the institutes are very independent. They have their own budgets, their own directors. They pretty much do whatever they want.